morning cruising uh, to the office. Uh, got a short day, got to take Lil' Man to get some things done. Lil' Man ain't so little no more, but uh, I got to take him and get him squared away today. And so I'm going to get, get in the office, get some things done, and then come by and pick him up. And I'm just riding and, uh, in, you know, uh, just finished uh, the first session of my morning ritual of prayer and meditation and I tell people all the time my version is probably different than yours uh, but it's my my way of connecting with the most high on what I believe the highest level at that particular moment may be and it's the goal is to get to higher and higher levels and to obtain new levels of peace um, and as I was thinking about this and ensuring that I'm in the right state of mind to take on whatever challenges I may face uh, over the course of the day, and there are always challenges. Uh, you know, some days are definitely greater than others, but each day has its own challenge. It's called life, and you have to be prepared to confront the challenges. Um, the way you start your day is going to have a massive impact on your capacity to confront the challenges of the day. Um, you, you set your state by how you confront your morning, how you wake up, what you decide your mentality and mindset will be. I decide every day that I'm going to be grateful. I, I decide every day that I'm going to be optimistic. I decide every day that I am confident and prepared enough to take on whatever challenge. So before I ever open my phone, before I ever answer a phone, or uh, even speak to anybody, because I'm the first one up, so I have an advantage. Nobody is in my face when I wake up with any type of stimuli. stimuli. So I'm able to do that. But I wake up and I decide I'm gonna be grateful. For me, at this particular state, in, 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 uh, stage of my life uh, it's easy because when I wake up and I look to my left uh, my wife Marion is there I watch her and I watch her take her first breath um, and I'm grateful I know that there are a number of children who are not really children anymore some are still children but most are now young adults are you know some are in their 30s but they're still mine to parent, just parenting them in a different way. And I'm grateful that I'm entrusted with that. I've not always been the best. I don't always do the best. I'm not always right. Uh, but my goal is to be accessible. My goal is to be engaged. My goal is to do what I can and to improve upon that. And that's what I strive for. And that's what I teach the young man. It, 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 it's not the perfection. It's the engagement. It's the desire to be. And uh, so that, so that's something else to be grateful for. And then something else that I have to be grateful for is the whole idea that what I do for a living helps people. What I do for a living helps people be better perform better, do better, feel better. Um, and I get to do that every day in some form or another. I'm doing that. And so that's exciting to me. But then I started to think how many people out there won't start their day that way? How many people out there are wound so tight because of where they are in their life, because of what's going on, because of how they feel about something, uh, because of their intent on just ensuring that they get their point across in some way or another, or they get this particular problem solved, or they get this particular position at work, or whatever it is, get this business off the ground, that they're wound so tight that they never have a moment of peace for the people out there who are in uh, activism in the black community, those people out there, for those people who are out there uh, fighting and, 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 and in your way and in your mindset unveiling truths uh, 
to the masses, to those of you who are considered conspiracy theorists and you spend your time uncovering things and presenting theories and ideas about what could be. And this isn't to talk one way or another because conspiracy theories wouldn't exist if conspiracies didn't. But that's not what this is about. To those of you who have made it your life's work to make the idea of being woke and conscious a negative thing. To those of you who are out there trying to fight to take your family to the next level. To those of you who are pushing to get that next uh, promotion in your career. For those of you who are trying to get that business off the ground. My advice to you is take time and laugh. I, I, I remember not that long ago being so wound up about everything that was going on in the world and my responsibility to be an influence in changing it that it was almost like laughing and enjoying something funny was some form of meandering so to speak some form of skating with duty uh, some form of being irresponsible because how can you laugh when things are the way they are the thing is if you don't laugh you're going to consistently constrict yourself at an increasing rate emotionally psychologically physiologically and it's going to eventually start to take a toll on your health ask me how I know March in 2020, I had five heart attacks over the course of seven days. And I am so into ensuring that I get what I get done. I'm dismissing them for everything but a heart attack until the last two. The next to the last one made me go to the hospital and I'm your typical black man, not going to the doctor. You're going to drag me in, kicking and screaming, not going. But that last one made me get up and wake up my wife. And, and yeah, we gotta go. You know, luckily it wasn't an all out full cardiac arrest, but come to find out that I had a 90% blockage. That's a lot to do with eating and everything else. But what was closing the blockage and put it in is, I was on a tension level and a stress level through the roof. And if I allow myself to get that now, I can still feel. Now I know the feeling. And so I'm aware of when I'm letting something get to me and I stop it. You know, the thing is, we need to laugh. We need to find something to enjoy. And it's out there. I don't care. You know, I'm just sitting up laughing at something. And, and, and I'm like, man, how many people actually think this is stupid and find something wrong with what I was laughing at? And it's it's all it's going to always be somebody. But you got to have something that's funny. I came in the other night from picking up one of the uh, daughters from, from her job. And Marion is just giggling. And I'm like, what? And it was for the, the craziest little scene on a show and it's it's a, it's it's actually traveling around now it's a show i don't like but i'll watch it with my wife because she gets enjoyment out of it you know and there are scenes in it that's funny and then you know you'll catch yourself because you want you want to be this type of person or you got and you know and laugh sometimes you have to good sense like you know if you if, if you are a religious person lord forgive me uh you know, if you're not a religious person, I, I do better than that. But it was funny. I mean, find something to make you laugh. Laughter is unbelievable medicine. And you got to understand that you have the ability to heal yourself. But one of the ma major inhibitors of being able to self-heal is stress. Stress will upregulate disease genes quicker than anything else. Stress from trauma, stress from fear, stress from struggle, stress from anxiety will all upregulate disease genes. And you, you, you 
don't want to downregulate the genes that help you heal, the genes that produce uh, uh, positivity, the deep genes that produce uh, the pleasure feeling, that so, pleasure response that's so important to reinforcing good behavior. You don't want to downregulate those while upregulating cancer genes, upregulating genes that lead to diabetes. It's not simply your diet. Yes, your diet plays a role. It's also how you're thinking, your state of mind, where you're at physiologically has a ma major influence on your health. So that's just me dropping a little something off of you, off on you today. Laugh, enjoy, take some time out of whatever you're doing. I ain't saying don't be serious, don't get on your grind, don't put in your work, don't do what it is that you're passionate about doing. Do what it is you're passionate about doing. Be you, uh, as long as it's not hurting anyone else. And hopefully you're doing some things that's helping other people also. But take time out to laugh. Enjoy the people around you who enjoy you. And on that note, I'm going to get out for you guys. Special have an un announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.